Hey guys, Scanner Danner here, doing something a little bit different today. We have a 2007 Hyundai Santa Fe behind me, and I actually have a friend who needs to have cam and crank waveforms for a vehicle that he's struggling with. So what we're gonna do, this is a known good, we'll call it known good, because we have a faulty fuel pump on this, ve this vehicle. I'm gonna grab the cam and crank signals for him. I'm gonna show you how to do it using the Pico Scope. So first thing, let's take a look at the connector and where I'm taking these measurements from. I have the key off. This is on the far connector. So there's two connectors for this computer. There's one next to the strut and then there's one behind it. I've already gone through the wiring diagram and identified my camshaft signals on bank one and bank two. That's the pink and black. I'll give you, tell you the numbers for you. The yeah, the cam signals, bank two cam signals, the black wire, and that is my, that is pin 24, and then the pink wire is pin 25. There's no way I'm going to get in here with the camera and show you exactly where these wires are. Really, really a tight connector. I am using a piercing tool. We will put a little liquid electrical tape on there when we're done, so I have no issues doing that. My crank signal is crank low and crank high are actually, it's an inductive pickup. Um, you can see that this particular circuit has the two wires that are together and then there's this piece of heat shrink over top. This is a shielded circuit. So there's actually a ground wire that's wrapped around there. Pretty typical of an inductive type pickup, but the crank is inductive and the cams are Hall effects. So we'll have digital square waves on the cams and on the crank, we're gonna have an AC sine wave. And what I'm gonna do because of differences in the inductive pickups, I'm gonna put one channel for each, the crank low and the crank high, um, which is gonna actually help my friend too. He had some specific requests on what he wanted to see. Uh, so I'm gonna do two separate channels for the crank sensor. So let's remember that my crank low, Caleb, is the green one. We'll use that for the green channel. And then my crank high, gotta be careful back probing. Small connectors like this, you don't wanna cross the pins. It's almost safer to use the piercing tools. But as long as you're careful, you're good either way. Crank high is gonna be my red channel, Caleb, okay? And then we'll use the the cams, it doesn't really matter, bank one or bank two, but let's get these straight. So there's my crank high is brown, okay? And then my cam two is black. So my yellow is going to black. Wish I had a pen, I'm gonna ask myself this again. Pink is gonna be cam one, and then your crank low is way down here, it's 41. Crank high is 21. Crank low is 41. <laughs> But on the connector, right, 21 goes down the row and then 41, they're right next to each other. Okay? And then blue channel is my pink. That'll be cam. Shoot, I need to write this down. Okay, brown is red. Cam two is black, is yellow. Cam one, it's pink, it's blue. All right, let's get this plugged back in. I did write down my colors. Ah, oh, man, this is gonna be... I might need two more piercing tools. I don't know that this crank signals... It's not ideal. Hopefully we're making connection on all of these. A good lesson on why we use piercing tools sometimes. Just look how tight this connector is. All right, so again, using the Pico, the 4425, it's a four channel scope. <clears throat> Cam crank signals all connected here. Let's get the scope set up now on the screen. My son Caleb here is joining us as a rookie for this scope. The nice thing about it is it actually gives you some guidance. So if you pick automotive and then pick sensors and then our crankshaft, mm -hmm. inductive and hull effect, some theory that goes in that hull effects are digital inductive make their own voltage it's an ac sine wave this is an inductive crank we're going to do this cranking and the nice thing about it is it's going to give us a waveform of what we want to see 
and then it will set the scales and the voltages and everything up for us. Now we're gonna probably modify that a little bit, but it's a good foundation as far as setting it up. Like where do you start? All right, so it gives you info on it. We're not gonna go through all of the, you know, how it operates and things like that. And then you, you see the pickup, like it's showing you that it makes, you know, this thing rotates and it makes a voltage. It actually shows you um, the, oh, what are we using here? A breakout harness, it looks like in this six-way universal breakout lead set. That's what they're, they're having you do right at the sensor scales. That's what we're gonna see when we crank it. Just an example, it's AC sine wave. So it's pretty cool that they're providing, there's a lot of information in here, a lot more than I remember last time I looked actually. But just wanna remind you that that's there. We're not using this. See the scales are already set up on the scope. That's channel A, but we have this set up differently. One more piece, sensors. And I can go camshaft. My cam is Hall effect. Again, totally different. It's a square yeah. wave, right? And then it, it has preset scales and it talks about it. a lot of stuff you can learn from it. We're gonna set this up manually, okay? All right, so for us, my blue is my cam. So we're good with this. This plus minus 10 volt is good for that one. My yellow is also a Hall effect. So that's this one. We'll set this to a plus or minus, minus 10. I'm actually gonna change this. I change these to plus and minus 20 because it'll shrink them on our screen and we're okay. looking at four of them. Channel B will go plus and minus five volts for, for B and C, or maybe we'll go 10. We'll see what it looks like when we do the waveform. Uh, I'm putting more sampling in here than they had on their preset because I'm taking multiple channels and we're gonna set this to two seconds hit run I should have four channels on here right now so my scaling here it's my zero line okay where's my red yellow trace there it is should be good to go right there Caleb can you crank that for me go ahead Keep cranking, Caleb, keep cranking. Okay, cool. All right, so Caleb's back. Thank you for cranking that for me. Up here at the top, we have this waveform buffer. It's just like a rolling black box, right? Yeah. So this is the different um, buffer screens I'm kind of scrolling through. This is where you first started cranking it. And then what we want is repetition, right? When you're doing this kind of analysis, you want repetition. Mm -hmm. And I know that these signals, and you guys are looking at this too, these signals are very like thick because I have a lot of sample. I just didn't want to miss any detail. What you can do with this stored file is you can add a filter after. So like see how nice and clean the blue yeah, trace yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. We can do the same thing for all of these. But the nice thing about this for my friend is I want to make sure that I'm not missing any detail. He can, fil he can filter the file later and I'm showing that you can do that with this. Like there's the filter of that one we can filter all of these actually and and i'll have you know i'll save it but the nice thing about this is i can save this waveform and not be missing any detail gotcha. okay so this kind of crank sensor this is one that we would call a floating ground it actually has on the crank positive and crank negative it has a signal so this is for for matt who's the guy that i'm going to be sharing this with um, that's what we're looking at with these two crank signals. One's inverted from the other. Yeah, I see that. Um, amplitude with this would be double if we had gone together with those. Um, but uh, a lot of theory involved there. But there's my, my crank signals, here's my cam. And what I look for as far as um, repetition goes is, you know, I don't know how many sync notches are in the crank. That's this little space here. So there's one, there's another, and there's another. Um, I can look at the cam to help me there. So if I look at like this fat guy, this fat pulse, and, and then I see this fat pulse again over here on the, mm -hmm. on the blue trace. And so where I'm at from here to here would be 720. Gotcha. So I have two full crank rotations and one full cam rotation on both banks. 
Okay. And I'm going to call this, I'm going to call this known good because there are no cam crank relationship problems. Yeah. All this vehicle needs is a fuel pump. Okay. Now from here, what guys don't understand about using the Pico is when you, when you save these, like, look, I have all these frames. I only want to save frame nine. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll save it twice. I'm going to save all the frames and then I'll save just this frame because otherwise I'm going to send him this huge file that I can't even email. Yeah. My apologies, guys. We had a little laptop crash here. We battery died on the laptop. That was a little yeah. unfortunate, but I need to resave this file. And one of the nice things about the Pico, even though I did a reboot of the whole system, if I go to the file that I saved, that there was nothing there and pull that up, what it does is it sets up the same scales, same time base, everything that I had set up from before. Nice thing with the Pico. So we're gonna grab this capture one more time. If you could crank that for me, Caleb, and I'll pause it and we'll talk about this waveform one more time. This car might try to start because it's got the new pump in it now. Go ahead. Keep cranking. Keep cranking. Okay. All right, come out here, bud. So the first part of this, the car was trying to start and there's, you're gonna have some amplitude differences. Let's throw a filter in this one more yeah, time. Yeah, You'll see it better one. Yeah, and the characteristics of an inductive crank sensor are the faster the speed, the higher the voltage. So as the car was trying to start this on this round, these first, um, these first couple of screens, you can see the, especially that one, you see the amplitude change? Yeah. That's because the injectors were firing and there was some re residual fuel pressure. A side note here, guys, this car had a bad fuel pump and we're shooting a video on that. And in between here, we're doing some Pico stuff. So. Uh, I have to make Matt aware of that, the, the guy that I'm going to be sending these files to. But I'll save all of it and I'll make him aware that really frames 10 and 11 would be the, the two good crank no start ones that he'll be able to use. But I'm going to save this file, save, I'm going to write over top of this. These labels should be there. I wonder why they didn't stay. Uh, cancel. I want to write over top all waveforms. We'll label this again later. I showed you, you can label it. So there's all the data. And then what I want to do, if I want to email, this would really be the one to send him. So I'm going to go file, save as, save. And then I'm doing just the current waveform, yeah. which is going to take 12 frames of data down to one much, much smaller file. Hit save on that. And that'll be the one that I send him. Okay. So guys, that's it. Cam crank relationships. Uh, we'll call this known good. This vehicle had a fuel pump that it needed. If you want to watch the fuel pump video that we did, I'll put a, just a, a link in the description of this video. You can watch that. If you're interested in the Pico, you can find that in a, uh, on my tools page, which will also be linked here too. Guys, thanks for your time. Real easy test to do using the Pico scope. Okay. No, okay. All right. Let's hang on. Listen, I hear the pump run. Yeah. It'll start. Good. Fire it up. Oh, ye of little faith. No, no, no. This is separate, Caleb. Shut that off. Put all that back together. Wait. You need to stop. Film something back here. No, I don't need to. Nope, I don't need to film anything back there. I can do everything from the front. Go ahead and put, while I'm farting around up here, go, you absolutely, put all your stuff back together. It's called troubleshooting, kid. <laughs> Who's your daddy? Is that filming? Yeah. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. <laughs>